All right, welcome to our next lesson. This time we're going to talk a little bit about sleep and the sleep stages. And this is a topic of continuous interest to students and to people in general because who cannot relate to it. When it comes to sleep, everybody sleeps. So what's really going on and what's going on through the stages of sleep? First of all, let's talk a little bit about sleep in general. See, the misconception that may exist at times about sleep is that sleep is something that almost interferes with life because it's a time where we are not being as productive or it's a time where we are just resting and not doing anything, anything that is worth doing. So the misconception there is that sleep interferes, but sleep is not that necessary. So first of all, sleep is a necessary component of our life. The three basic, most basic aspects of our overall health are nutrition, our exercise, and sleep. So on average we tend to sleep about one-third of our day and this translates to about a third of our lifetime. And think about it, on average a human being lives in our current time about 75 years of life. Imagine if you translate this to the amount of hours that you sleep then this means that on average a human being spends about 25 years of their lifetime sleeping. So if we're going to spend that much time on something, it's worth taking in consideration, it's worth exploring the topic. I want to bring out this analogy. Look, when you sleep, imagine that your brain on an active, normal, day-to-day -day stage is continuously working and is continuously encoding information from around the world. Everything that you do requires your brain to be active and working. The fact that you could be talking, the fact that you could be watching this video right now, the fact that you can be reading, the fact that you can be watching TV, the fact that you're listening to music, the fact that you're working out, your muscles, everything is going through the brain. So on a day-to-day -day instance, we're receiving, we're being bombarded with information over and over and over again. I want you to think of your brain as a very successful and a very busy restaurant. When there's a lot of movement around and people are coming and people are going, orders are being served, people are leaving, people are paying, it's busy, it's a busy, busy place. So that's your brain on a day-to-day -day basis, it's very, busy. it's very busy. Very often in big chains of restaurants, when they expect a lot of people, they reserve a spot for cleaning the restaurant and they usually do that by the end of the shift. So. If we are working from 8 a.m. till 10 p.m., at 10 p.m. everything closes and now everybody must now give it a good, good clean to the kitchen. Everybody must clean now the entire place. This is technically what happens to your brain when you sleep. When your brain, I'm sorry, when your eyes close and they say that's it for the day, instead of resting, the brain actually starts to be at its most active stage because it's trying to clean up all the mess, all the information that you received over the day, taking up some information that is valuable, discarding other information that is not valuable, and making sure that it's now clean and ready up for the next day. That's what happens to your brain when you sleep. Now, this goes through a process. Let's walk through it. And by the way, as I talk about this, of course, there's a lot of variations with a lot of different people. There are variations that can be caused by genetic circumstances. There can be variations caused by uh, some type of health concern. There can be variations caused by sleep disorders and there can be variations by age. The cycles wouldn't apply in the same way to an infant as they would apply to an elder adult. So this applies to an average person at a mid-adult year life. At a mid-adult age, I'm sorry. So the sleep stages, let's walk through them. First of all, when we are awake, when we're awake, we're going through a constant series of information processing and your brain have alpha waves that are maintaining. If we can scan your brain right now, they're maintaining your brain active and it's going on a constant shift of information and processing like that. And those are your alpha waves. However, when you sleep, the waves shift into what are called the delta waves and those start to make your brain react a little bit different one time, one step at a time. So 
We start off, when I took this class for the first time, they would be called the stages, stage one, stage two, stage three. Now the correct name, the correct name is NREM. So NREM1, if you can see, resemble a little bit like the alpha waves. The difference is that they start to spread out a little bit. They spread out a little bit. Technically, that first stage is not yet when you're sleeping. Technically, this is when you're falling asleep. Can you relate how sometimes, say, you'd be watching TV before you sleep? You may be watching your tablet, uh, Netflix show, whatever. Like, I usually put my tablet here on my, on my chest and I'm looking at it like that, right in front of me. If you're watching something, doesn't it happen that you feel like you're falling asleep? Technically speaking, that sensation of falling asleep, actually you're already sleeping, you're already in stage one. But it's odd because sometimes when you're falling asleep, you try to force yourself to remain awake. Say that you're watching a TV show, there's 20 minutes left in the show, and you're trying to fight off your desire to sleep because you say, let me just finish this episode, let me just finish this episode and then I'll sleep. It's funny how sometimes if you force yourself to remain awake and you say, let me finish off this episode, so 20 minutes that you were fighting off the moment that you were trying to sleep and finally the episode is off and you turn off the tablet or the TV and then now that you're trying to sleep, now you can't. The reason is because our brain can be sometimes a bit of a douchebag because it's telling you, well, so you wanted to remain awake, all right, so let's keep awake. And now it may take a little bit of time and effort to fall back into the delta waves. So the recommendation is, if you're falling asleep, don't fight it off, just rest, sleep. Or else you may risk that if you fight off the desire to sleep or the need to sleep, it may be harder for you to now go back into the stages from scratch. It's far easier at this point to keep going down than it is to come up and try to come down again, all right? So the first stage is technically when you're not yet asleep, but kind of falling asleep. This may not, take, may not take more than 10, 15 minutes. And then when you shift into the second stage, the waves now spread out a little bit more. And at this point, it's characterized by what is a type of momentary amnesia. So. This is, for example, a time that if you were speaking to someone and in the middle of the conversation you fell asleep and the person the next day tries to remind you, remember when I told you this? And you have no clue. In that momentary amnesia, people could be saying things to you, things in the environment could be happening, but if you're asleep, you have no clue for what was happening. Or doesn't it happen, it used to happen to me very often when we had the old DVDs or the VHS that I would be watching a movie, I'd be watching a show or something and then at one point I would fall asleep and I would turn off the TV and the next day when I turn it on again I would look at the program and there would be like 20 minutes that apparently I watched but I had no clue of it because I was in that second stage of sleep and that momentary amnesia kept me totally off from it. That's the characteristic of the second stage and it usually takes also about 10-15 minutes. So we're talking about about 30 minutes worth of sleep when you move on into the stage 3. This is the important one and this is also called deep sleep. So you can see it better, deep sleep. So in the third stage of deep sleep, the waves are going to be spread out to their longest. And at this point, you can say that it's the deepest stage of the sleep because you know how sometimes when you wake up it's not that difficult to get up you feel fresh you feel good other times it's very hard to wake up and maybe somebody really needs to like push your body hard so you wake up and you know how sometimes you wake up you kind of sit in the corner of the bed like your hair is all over the place and like you have no clue for who you are, what's life, what's happening with anything because you have this huge confusion going on. Deep, deep sleep 
is a stage where the waves are at their longest as far as separation and it takes a little bit of time maybe just a couple of, you know a couple minutes or maybe even seconds for them to pile back together so you're awake again but in the steep sleep stage in the deep sleep stage it's hard for you to kind of remember and bring back to yourself being back to who you are being back to your awakened state because the stages, because the, I'm sorry, the, the waves are spread out so far. That deep sleep stage, in essence, is very important because it prepares the body for what is the most important sleep stage being REM. Now, one thing, the deep sleep stage is usually where dreams begin. And we'll talk about dreams by the end of this lesson. But the thing about the deep sleep stage, it takes about an hour and a half because now your brain is fully relaxed and ready out for the most important task, which is now REM. REM stands for Rapid Eye Movement. And the waves resemble a lot like the alpha waves. The difference is they tend to be a little bit tinier and they tend to be a little bit more collectively put together, almost like huge lines being drawn over and over again. It's called rapid eye movement because at this stage, your brain is fully activated. And this is now the, the staff, the maintenance staff going through the restaurant and cleaning the whole thing, boom, 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 boom. Putting up that fabulous on the floor to just wipe it up really good. At this point, there were people in the restaurant they're working at their hardest, at this point, this is your brain functioning at its best to clean all the mess that was there in the day. And it seems to be as a side effect of all this movement in your brain that our eyes start to move like that. When you're like standing next to a person that is sleeping, you may see their eyes moving like that. Don't freak out. Don't be afraid. They're not being possessed. None of that. It's only that they're going through the REM stage. For some people, it moves really slow. For some people, they move kind of fast. But for all of us, it starts to happen. And there's side effects to our body. You know, our heartbeat might increase a little bit. We may start to breathe a little bit faster. It's normal to have uh, kind of sensations through your genitals. So uh, men can have erections. Women can have annual lubrication. Like all of that is common. And it is not related specifically to the content of the dream. It's just your brain being active and everything is kind of being touched while it's going through it. REM stage is the most important stage. Why? Key things to remember. REM repairs the brain, restores the brain, and keeps it ready for the next day. When you sleep, the key is not really to walk through the first two stages, the key is to reach REM, clean everything, and keep the brain ready for the next day. Keep now the restaurant wall clean so we can open up for the customers the next day. Now, all of this is barely one cycle, but in a good night's sleep, isn't that enough? But you go back and you transition a little bit faster through the stages, boom, 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 and you visit the REM again. And then you go back and you transition through the stages, boom, 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 faster. Every time, taking less time. So, on a good night's sleep, you visit the REM three times. How long does that take an average? Well, there's the usual recommendation. How many hours of sleep should you have in a day? Eight hours. So, on average, going through the cycle three times takes about eight hours. That's where the number comes from. Now, to not make this video so long, we just want to take a couple minutes to talk a little bit about the content of dreams. See, dreams begin in stage three, and they tend to be at their most vivid in stage four, which is REM. And the concept of dreams began to be studied in psychology through Sigmund Freud. He was the first individual that began to discuss the concept of dreams and began to create interpretations for dreams. And past this, the influence was so strong that there have been a multitude of science and both truth science 
and kind of fictionalized not to be trusted that much science trying to explain what is the content of dreams if you go to Barnes and Nobles you may see books to talk a lot about interpretation of dreams all of this may be pseudoscience because in the field of psychology there have been no consistent evidence for what the meaning of dreams are so I personally can be very fascinated and the thought of some dreams can be quite fascinating for the amount of creativity that I may have when I'm sleeping and it's not unique to me this is something that happens to many people they may be at their most creative sense when they dream about something it can be the most exciting self or it can be the scariest self if you have say for example some type of brain I'm sorry psychological disorder such as PTSD dreams now may be a very dark territory to visit because of the content and the vividness of everything that you may see inside of the head however in psychology there's no conclusion for what a dream is supposed to mean is there isn't this is all subjective so can dreams have a meaning yes but the dream does not convey the same meaning to everyone if I dream of an airplane it may be a very powerful dream and it may have a very powerful meaning to me but it wouldn't be the same for anyone else that is dreaming of an airplane if I dream of a banana it doesn't mean maybe anything that just being a banana but for someone else it may be like an erotic dream you know this doesn't translate the same to everyone so it can be powerful yes it can be very powerful but that really depends on what you believe that it means not to what anyone else tells you that it means you gotta be very careful about that pseudoscience and you know a couple quick stories to wrap this up uh, one of my favorite bands of all time is the Beatles if you heard the Beatles and one of my favorite songs of all time is Let It Be which was written by Paul McCartney and Paul McCartney has continually said about how he was going through a lot of turmoil in his life and in a dream he saw his mother telling him just relax and let it be and when he woke up that gave him the content of the dream that dream for Paul McCartney led to a successful song historic song but if it was me dreaming that it would be just like well thank you mom but that's it it wouldn't mean anything else so the same content does not translate to many people and for what is spooky is that sometimes dreams may kind of anticipate things that can happen but again this is very subjective to finish this up you know one of my favorite stories one time I had a student who told me that he was dreaming about him running on a highway and he was running and running and running and there was no end to the goal he was just running and running and then he said that he would have this dream often that he would look up at the sky and the sky seemed to be like cut off in half and one half of the sky was color blue and the other half of the sky was color pink and he could tell him in serious because I, I don't know what it means but it's just something that goes through my mind and I'm telling him I wish I could tell you but I don't and it's very often that people may uh, approach a psychology student or a psychology major I grant this what does it mean tell me what it means and it's frustrating because you want to tell them but you you don't because you don't know the answer for it and I told him dude I just don't know by the end of the semester he emailed me sir guess what my wife is pregnant and guess what I'm waiting twins we're waiting for twins turns out that he had a boy and a girl in an odd way his dreams seemed to be anticipating what was happening could have been a huge coincidence for me I would have that dream it wouldn't mean nothing because I don't have twins for him it was very powerful what was going on so the content of dreams is very powerful and they can convey a very strong message but that is for you and it's subjective this is not something that would come across for everyone else hope you like this lesson thank you guys for listening let's move on have a good one